BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of his word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be his disciples and after his death and resurrection those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now after 2,000 years Beth Goyim Messianic congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Let's turn to the book of Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 16, please. Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 16. This is Parash number 38. It is in uh, message number P142, P142, Parash 38. It is entitled Korach. Uh, this is a great teaching for those who are in leadership. Um, as we go through this teaching, we see a whole group of people that come against Moshe and Aaron. Um, and uh, Moshe, you know, is an incredible leader. I, I know he made one mistake, and Jehovah did not allow him to go into the promised land, but uh, he really is an incredible leader. I do not have his skills. I would, you know, people were doing this to me. I don't know if I'd just be able to fall on my face before the Lord and, you know, say, say what Moses said to uh to God about them. Um, he really was uh, an incredible man, and I can't wait to meet him one day in Hashemayim, because we know he's there, because he met with Yeshua on the mountain of transfiguration. Okay, so we know that Moses' feet did touch the promised land. All right, so let's start with, um, with this parash. Let's uh, look at Numbers, Bamidbar 16, verses 1 and 2. Now, Korak the son of Yitzhar, the son of Kahat, the son of Levi, along with Datan and Aviram, the sons of Eliav, and on the son of Pelet, descendants of Reuven, took men and rebelled against Moshe. Siding with them were 250 men of Yisrael, leaders of the community, key members of the council of men of reputation. So here, um, the first part that we really got to understand so this, this particular parash is not only for leadership. This parash, this portion of the Torah is also for those that are in uh, servant roles uh, to that leadership that whatever Jehovah has put in charge of the congregation. One of the things that we need to learn from this particular parash also is, um, you know, if you don't like what's going on with the leadership, in your congregation, learn a very good lesson from here, okay? Um, because if you're somebody new that has come into the congregation, or even like Korak that we're seeing here, they got 250 men, leaders in the community to come against Moshe, okay? So it's something that we're going to learn. We're going to see what happens. If Jehovah puts somebody in charge, it is not your job to try to remove them from their position. It's your job to care about them if you see that something is going wrong in proprietary. You go to them, you, you state what you believe, you use you, you scripture, okay? And it's private, okay? But we're going to see something that occurs here that, you, you know, these people do something incredibly wrong, okay? So let's, um, let's take a, a look at these three uh, people here. Korak, his name, or Korah, his name means bald. So he's a baldy. Okay, so <laughs> it's not a bald eagle. Okay, Datan, another one of the leader. Laws or rights. And Abiram, my father is ex exalted. 
The bald law of rights, my father is exalted, is the sentence there. They came against Moshe. They got 250 other men. You know, see, sometimes if, you know, people, you know, this is why, you know, sometimes you don't meet in a group to discuss things. You, as a leader, I, I never meet in a group. Okay, I'll meet with two people at once, never in a group anymore. I've done that, and I made that terrible mistake, and I won't ever do that again. Okay, you talk with people one-on-one. -on -one. This is scriptural. You talk with people one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, a lot of times when people are separated from their, their you know, this threefold cord, you know, when they're together, this evil is strong, but separately, they're not as strong. So these three men, they got together, and they got 250 men together with them okay now with that understanding go to the book of jude the book of jude hold your place in number 16 and then let's go to the book of jude chapter 1 verse 11 please jude chapter 1 verse 11 got it there Brittany? jude chapter 1 verse 11 okay we're going to be talking about rebellion Woe well, to them in that they have walked the road of Cain. They have given themselves over for money to the era of Balaam. They have, been, they have been destroyed in the rebellion of Korak. Okay? So as you read in the book of James, uh, Jude, I mean Jude here, Yehuda, this whole book, uh, I think it's the one chapter there. Okay? You need to understand the context of what else he's writing with this context of coming against leadership. Okay? Leadership means the people who brought you the word of God, okay? You know, yes, we're to obey the laws of the country, but if the people are not obeying the laws of God, you follow God first and man second. So if they say murder your child, you know, such as an abortion, it's a good thing here in America and around the globe. You know, Planned Parenthood is pushing, you know, have sex and, and abort your child. We don't follow that stupidity because that's going to lead to the pit of hell, okay? So here, when you're reading in the Brit Hanashah, this is where most people don't understand to keep the law because here, the, the understanding is coming against Moshe. Okay, let's go back to Bamidbar 16 and verse 3. Let's look at verse 3 now. Bamidbar 16, number 16, verse 3. They assembled themselves against Moshe and Aaron and said to them, you take too much on yourselves. After all, the entire community is holy, every one of them, and Jehovah is among them, so why do you lift yourselves up above Jehovah's assembly? Amen? Amen? So with this, you see that the group of leaders, because they have not been trained into what is order, you can't have a bunch. There has to be a, a, a leader, okay? Yes, there are other people that are leaders of their group, but there has to be one when it comes down to a difference of opinion, Yehovah chose Moshe, okay? It's very simple. Yehovah chose Moshe just like he chose me for this role. I don't know why, but he did, okay? And he chose Oni for the role, Pastor Oni, for his role as a leader in the prayer tower there in Beth Yeshua, okay? So when you assemble yourselves against that leader, it is not a wise decision. If you're, if you're having people whispering and gossiping, see, this is another thing that was going on with these three people, is they were gossiping behind Moshe's back. Okay? That's another thing that tears the work of God down. Gossiping, not knowing your order. So here, this group, instead of going to Moshe separately, I got a problem with what you're doing, Give the leader a chance to say, okay, well, this is why I'm doing. Set your heart at ease. This is why I'm doing things. God told me to do things this way. So these, this group of people assembled themselves against God's anointed. Okay? And when you do that, disaster will come upon you. Okay? As I said, and I think it's very, very important that you don't come against what God has done. And let's go to the Brit Hadashah understanding of that, of going against Jehovah's anointed. Let's turn to Revelation 17. Revelation 17, verses 12 through 14. Revelation 17, verses 12 through 14. Revelation 17, verse 12 through 14. 
The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet begun to rule, but they receive power as kings for one hour along with the beast. They have one mind and they, have, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will go to war against the lamb, but the lamb will defeat them because he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are called chosen and faithful will overcome with him. Okay, so here what's going on in the book of Revelation is these group, as we're going to see in the future and maybe unfortunately in our lifetime with what's, what's going on in the news of the world today, is that these people side with the evil one and go against God's anointed, which will be against Yeshua, against uh, the, the, the saints, those that are following in God's Ways, God's order, God's Torah, keeping the covenant. So here they're making war, here in verse 14, against the Lamb. And the way you understand that, the way it's, it's a truer understanding, is once you understand Korach going against Jehovah's anointed, you better understand what's going on in Revelation 17. Once you understand going against Jehovah's anointed, Okay, now these are the ones are fighting against the heaven's army, and I think that's kind of sad. Okay, now let's also understand assembling against Jehovah's anointed by turning back to Matthew 25. Matthew 25, verses 31 through 34. Matthew 25, Matthew 25, verses 31 through 34. Matthew 25. Verse 31 through 34. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, accompanied by all the angels, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. The sheep he will place at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come. You, whom my Father has blessed, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. Amen? I really do believe that this is happening in our world today. I, I strongly believe in my heart of hearts and in my spirit that Jehovah is doing this in the spirit with many people. This, uh, this particular ministry at Beth Goim has been getting so many phone calls, so many things from around the globe where people are leaving denominations of man, such as Baptists and all these other uh, denominations that God never formed, okay? And they're calling us and they want to know, you're teaching the Bible, you know, okay? You're Tristan, look up. You're teaching the scriptures, okay? So they're, they're like, there's this one uh, person that called, you know, he was a Baptist pastor, and he wanted to just join in and keeping the Shabbat. And it's amazing what the Lord is doing. He's separating the sheep from the goats. He's separating them just like the group that was with Korach, those three, and the 250 leaders, they were separated to the left-hand side of the Lord. And then you had on the right, Moshe and the people of God. So here in Matthew 25, as we're reading verses 31 through 34, you see Yeshua is separating the sheep from the goats, those that really want to follow in spirit and in truth. And you're seeing this around the globe today. You truly are seeing it, okay? That Yehovah is separating. Now the other part for us and for each every, and every person, because you're in charge of your own heart, you have to discern what is truth, okay? You have to discern where you're going to stand, who you're going to align yourself with. First and foremost, you align with God. And then, as we sang, Hine Matov, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity, in unity, echad, in unity, okay? So here you had a group going against Moshe and Aaron, the anointed leaders from Jehovah, those that went before Pharaoh, those who brought the plagues. You know, Jehovah spoke to Moshe. Moshe spoke to Aaron. Aaron was the prophet. He said to Pharaoh, this is what's going to happen if you don't do what you're going to do, if you don't let the people go. The, pro the, the prophecy came true. Boom. Okay. So those two, 
Okay, granted, they didn't have texting and, you know, everybody didn't have their, hey, look, you know, look at those plagues. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, everybody's got their, their smartphone. Hey, look at all those frogs. Look at the water turning blood. Could you imagine that? <laughs> that would be cool if we had video back then. Okay, maybe we'll get to see the replay of it up in heaven. Okay, but imagine that. But so Moshe and Aaron were used, and now these people, we're all anointed. This is true. But you may not be anointed for leadership. We're called to be a holy nation to live by God's rules, but we're all not called to be leaders. We're all not called to be the head of leaders either. Okay? Now let's go back to uh, Numbers, but Midbar 16. 16 verse 4, please. But Midbar 16 verse 4. When Moshe heard this, he fell on his face. Amen. Now, at first, you know, I, in my own head, I always want to make a joke. You know, when Moses, you know, had these people coming against him, he was an old guy and he fell in his face. Oh, I got a heart attack. I caught a heart attack. You know, it's the first thing I always say. I think it's a joke, you know, because remember, Moshe, he's, you know, he's 83 years old. No, he's 80, 80 years old. OK, when he's when when this is happening or maybe a little bit older than that, I'm like, you know, he, but he's actually doing something that I don't know myself as a leader could really do this. I, I've been getting better at it, okay? Uh, but I, I don't know if I'm at Moshe's level. That's a, just an honest thing. You know, all these people coming against you and you fall on your face before the Lord. Lord, don't kill them! I'm sort of like on the mindset, yeah, Lord, torque them up. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the kind of guy I am. I'm like, you, you know, you chose what you want to do. That's cool. You know, you don't want to come worship here. That's cool. There's other messianic congregations that you go to, or if you're stupid enough to want to go start one, go ahead. Uh, you know, this is a hard job, man. It's a hard job. But Moshe, this is why I think he's such a beloved person from Jehovah. Yeah, he messed up once, and yes, it was wrong. Um, and that's another thing when, if you ever think about going against leadership, remember Moshe was a leader of leaders. He got to mess up once people who sit in the congregation and are servants in the congregation get to mess up a lot more than leadership because leadership to much is given much is required. Okay. I don't get that luxury that other people do. Because if I mess up, I take everybody else down with me, okay? People are coming to learn about the King of Kings, and I've been anointed for this job. Why God chose me? I don't know. I really don't, okay? Because I'm not like Moshe. I'm like, yeah, Lord, go ahead. Lightning bolts, that'll be cool. You know, hey, open up the earth. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll be like, see, told you. You know, but Moshe didn't, you know? He was an amazing, amazing leader, and, you know, I'm trying to get there. Uh, I'm better. But he was, when he fell on his face, this was in reverence to God and intercession for the people, in intercession for them. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's one of the, the, the honors of leadership, you know, honors of doing that, of being a person that is taking the prayers of the saints, the people, to the king of kings. But Moshe, you know, as these people were coming against him, he was an incredible beloved of the king, how he interceded on their behalf, not as an old man, as I was joking about a moment ago, but in reverence to God, this is a way you go before the Lord in true submission to him. So if the people wanted to crush him, they could. That's another thing. When Moshe is on his face, see, this is what I've seen in the church, you know, when I used to preach a lot around in the churches and stuff like that, you know, people falling backwards. And I just thought, like, what are you doing? You know, that's so pagan. That's so satanic. Moshe, when people were coming against him, you know, if you're flat on your face before the Lord, that's a great reverence, but it's also in a, in a submissive position to God. So Moshe was being a, a servant of servant to the Lord so that he, the Lord would not crush these people. Now here's 
how you understand that, then take that understanding. Let's turn to the book of Matthew. Matthew, Matthew, Yahoo, 26. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 39. Matthew, Yahoo, hold your place in Bamidbar, number 16, but we're going to Matthew 26 now. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 39. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 39. Then Yeshua went with his Talmudin to a place called Gethsemane and said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Kepha and Zabdives, two son. Grief and anguish came, anguish came over him. And he said to them, My heart is so filled with sadness that it could die. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going on a little further, he fell on his face, praying, My father, if possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Amen? So here Yeshua is in submission to his father. He went to pray alone, and he didn't you know, just stand there and talk, which is okay, but here in true reverence to the father and what the father's will would be for what Yeshua knew was about to happen. Here's another incredible example for us as people, as leaders, to do. When the toughest decisions have to happen, you need to be on your face before the Lord. Not just kneeling, not just sitting, not just in a prayer closet, but when you really want to be humble before the Lord, what you really need is to be on your face before the Lord. And that's what Yeshua, even though he's fully man and fully God at the same time, we're not going to get into talking about that at the moment in the Godhead. He was a man at that point too. And he was interceding as Moshe interceded for the nation of Israel. So here was Yeshua interceding for the nation of Israel, but also for us, those who had not even been born yet. So he fell on his face in submission, in reverence to the Father, Yehovah, the Eternal One, in intercession for us. Now, when we're praying, we should do the same intercession if you really want your prayer heard. Not doesn't mean that your petition is going to be granted, because Yeshua said, take this cup from me. That's really the Lord's prayer, take this cup from me. But he said, not my will, but yours, in submission to the Lord, on your face. All right, let's go back to Bamidbar 16. Moving right along here. Maybe we'll get through half the chapter. Bamidbar 16, verse 5 through, through, through 7, please. 5 through 7. Then he said to Korach and his whole group, In the morning, Jehovah will show who are his and who is the holy person he will allow to approach him. Yes, he will bring whoever he chooses near to himself. Do this. Take censers, Korach, all, uh, Korach and all your group. Put fire in them and put incense on them before Jehovah tomorrow. The one whom Jehovah chooses will be the one who is holy. It is, if it, it is you, you sons of Levi, who are talking, taking too much on yourselves. Amen? These guys were really like, you know, just demonically possessed. And that's all you can say. They left Egypt behind, but they brought the gods with them instead of following the God of Abraham. Okay? But here, one of the things that we're all to understand is in prayer, in submission, in who's taking who, the Lord is bringing something special. Okay? So what we're doing is we're taking a fire and we're taking an incense and this, this is one of the things that actually the Catholic Church gets right. And I've seen it done when I used to go a long, long time ago uh, with some Catholic people to Christmas Mass, you know, that 25th thing. And I'd see the, you know, the, the priest do that thing you know, with the censer. I always wanted to see them go, woo! <laughs> you know, and you go, dun, 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 and get the thing going pretty high, too. And I just like, come on, take it all the way around, you know. Okay, but they get it from the scripture. That's one thing they actually got right. They don't get much right, but they did get that right. But when your prayers are going before the Lord, it's one of the things we have here are the anointing candles, the, the scented candles from Israel here that we light during our services. 
okay, where as you come in, one, it's medicine that you're breathing in because once you do our holy oil study, which is on our website under education, you understand that you're breathing this in. But it also, there's something that Jehovah wants is that it's engulfing you. This, this incense is engulfing you. So what Moshe is saying to Korak, okay, well, let's go before the Lord. You bring your incense, we'll bring our incense, and you know, God is going to be the one who chooses who he wants. This is also what a lot of people don't understand. When, when the leader is chosen by God, okay, Jehovah chose me to start a work that had never been done down in this area. Why, as I said before, I don't know. It wasn't something I was looking for. But he said, whom shall I send? And I'm like, somebody else. <laughs> That'll be better. Somebody else. Yeah, that's cool. And then, then, you know, he said it again. And I was like, I don't know who you're talking to. Uh, you know, but then, then he smacked me in the head. And it kind of hurt. So I said, I guess me. <laughs> you know? So, you know, when he hits you, you, you know, I've been in fights, and, you know, physical fights, you know, when I was younger, you know, and, you know, got hit in the head and you see stars sometimes. When somebody hits you hard enough, you, you, know, you close your eyes and bang, you know, you're seeing stars. And when God hit me in the head, I saw stars, okay? So here, Moshe was anointed for his position. And these people who thought that they knew something, they wanted to go before the Lord. And, and remember Aaron's two sons, they tried to go before the Lord at the wrong time. And what happened to them? Even though they had eaten in the presence of Jehovah, what happened to them? Zap. Now, if you really want that, make sure you're right, because if the Lord zaps you dead, do not think you're going to end up in heaven. Okay? If he takes you out like that, you ain't getting in. So you better be sure that what you're doing is right. But here... The incense is what we're focusing on, bringing that before the Lord, bringing that for him to choose your prayer to be heard. Now, with that understanding, go to Revelation 5, please. Revelation 5, verse 8 through 10. Revelation 5, Revelation 5, verse 8 through 10. Getting anything there, Brittany Denise? Hop along. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. Revelation 5, verse 8 through 10. When he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down in front of the Lamb. Each one held a harp and gold bowls filled with pieces of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. They sang a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals because you were slaughtered at the cost of blood. You ransomed for God persons from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You made them into kingdom for God to rule, Kohanim to serve Him, and they will rule over the earth. I don't know. That's just a song. Uh, uh, you can make up your own song. I don't know what they're singing because it's got to happen. Okay? But what I do want to point to here in Revelation is they had the incense. So these were the things that Jehovah chose to allow to come before him. You can burn up all you want. But as we understood from number 16, Moshe is saying, Jehovah's going to choose what he wants. 
So you could bring your prayers and petitions before the Lord if you're not living by his rules. Let me say that again. If you're not living by his rules, do not think your prayer is being heard. As it says, and we've spoken about in previous lessons, Proverbs 28.9 states what? If you're not following Torah, the 613 laws, then your prayer is an abomination before God. You can either believe it or not. I'm not God. So if I was, to be a lot more zapping going on. All right, let's go back to number 16, please. Number 16. Number 16, verses 8, nine, eight through 11, please. Number 16, verses 8 through 11. It's one of the other things I also love about this particular chapter is it teaches you lessons as a leader, how to trust in Jehovah. But Midbar 16, verses 8 through 11, then Moshe said to Korak, listen here, you sons of Levi. Is it for you a mere trifle that the God of Israel has separated you from the community of Israel to bring you close to himself so that you can do the work in the tabernacle of Jehovah and stand before the community serving them? He has brought you close and all your brothers and sons of Levi with you. Now you want the office of Cohen too? That's why you and your group have gathered together against Jehovah. After all, what is Aaron that you complain against him? Amen? Now why are they complaining against the prophet? Remember, Aaron is a prophet. He is also a priest, but he's also a prophet. Because remember, a prophet is one who speaks the word that was given to him by God. So Moshe was given the word by God. Moshe spoke to Aaron, and Aaron spoke to the Pharaoh. Okay? So what are you complaining against him? If God has chosen, you know, nobody was holding you. We had left the Egyptians behind. You didn't need, we weren't dragging you along. So why is it that you want to come against God's anointed. So if this thought ever crosses your mind, wherever you're worshiping, may it be that you always worship at at Beth Yeshua there, or here, or wherever you're worshiping, make it sure that it's a place that's set on the word of Jehovah, but don't ever go against God's anointed. Like, what what are you complaining against him? Do Do you know what you're doing? You know, so if you did, then ask God, hey, I want my own congregation. But then have to follow biblical order. How did Aaron become the Kohen Hagadol? Oh, there was a leader who laid hands on him, specifically Moshe, and then everything since that time has been in order of that. Now, let's take this going against the leadership. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 3, please. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 4 and 5. First Corinthians three, verse four and five. First Corinthians three, verse four and five. For when one says, I follow Shaul, and another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you being merely human? After all, what is Apollos? What is Shaul? Only servants through whom you come to trust. Indeed, it was the Lord who brought you to trust through one of us or through another. Amen? So, you always want to follow Yeshua. Okay? And that's where I get into this whole big beef with New Testament believers. You know, they don't follow the Old Testament. They don't follow order. Okay? I, you know, they, every time you talk to them, and you try to teach them about the Torah of God and that Yeshua was calling us back to that and trying to get us to go back to the perfect order of the five books of the Torah. Okay? And here, Paul was running into the same thing. Well, one follows me, another follows Apollos. Don't follow men. Follow God. Follow his word. Follow Yeshua's example. You can't go wrong with that. Okay? And this is, when you get this understanding of, in number 16, going against God's anointed. And people were going against Paul. People were going against this one and that one. Just follow the Lord. Be taught. All right, let's go up back to Numbers 16, please. Number 16, verses 12 through 14 now. Moving right along, we might actually get through the chapter. 
Number 16, verses 12 through 14. Then Moshe sent and summoned Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, but they replied, We won't come up. Is it such a mere trifle bringing us up from the land, flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the desert, that now you arrogate yourself to the role of dictator over us? You haven't at all brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey, and you haven't put us in possession of fields and vineyards. Do you think you can gouge out these men's eyes and blind them? We won't come up. So here they first want to go against Moshe, and now he's like, well, come on, let's talk. Let, you know, let's bring it before God. And now, no, 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 we're not going to come up. We're not going to come up. You know, and here it's like, uh, did you forget you were a slave a little while ago? You know, he, you know here uh, they said, you know, bringing us up from a land flowing with Chalav and Nevash to kill us in the desert. No, you fool. You were a slave. It's, people forget really quick. I've noticed that in leadership. That people forget really fast where they used to be. How they used to be getting D's and F's in school, and now they're doing well in school, and they, they forget where they, they, they came from and stay on that narrow path. You know, this is what I find in leadership. The same attitude, this 3,000 years later, you know what? People haven't changed. It's one of the things when you read this and you're in leadership and you're like, hey, well, I'm going through the same thing. You know, you know well, you know, we, we were doing this. I'm like, then why did you come here? If your other church was so great, why did you come to this place? You know, people come and say, well, the other place are doing this. Um, why aren't you there then? You know, if everything was so great. Why aren't you there? Okay, so people come against authority. So, once again, let's turn back to the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1, please. Jude chapter 1, verses 8 through 11 now. Jude chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. Jude chapter 1, verse 8 through 11. Jude chapter 1, 8 through 11. I know it's a hard book to find because it's little. Likewise, these people with their visions defile their own flesh, despise godly authority, and insult angelic beings. When Michael, one of the ruling angels, took issue with the adversary arguing over the body of Moshe, he did not dare to bring him an insulting charge, but said, May Jehovah rebuke you. However, these people insult anything they don't understand, and what they do understand naturally without thinking like animals by these things they are destroyed. Woe to them in that they have walked in the road of Cain. They have given themselves over for money. The Arab Balaam, they have been destroyed in the rebellion of Korak. Look back at verse 8. Likewise, these people with their visions defile their own flesh, despise godly authority, and insult angelic beings. I've, I've been in some things where people, you know, the, these Christians, you know, barely Christians or whatever they are, you know, they, they would say, we can command the angels. No, you can't. And, you know, I'm going to stand over here when you go do that, okay? So when the Lord you know, makes sure, you know, he might have a, you know, a day where he's not right on the mark with that lightning bolt. I don't want to be next to you if he slightly misses. Okay, not that, like the Lord's going to miss, but I don't even want to be near the explosion, okay? People, when you go against God's anointed, where Dayton, Aviram, and Eliab were going against Moshe, they defiled their own flesh. They became sinful. So if you're being dragged into something like this, don't go along with it. Step away. Ask God for guidance. Ask Jehovah for truth. Ask for discernment. And go directly to the leader by yourself and say your concerns. Okay? Don't defile your flesh because if you are defiling your flesh, don't worry, you won't end up in heaven. All right? Now, let's go back to Bamidbar 16, verse 15. Bamidbar 16, number 16, verse 15. 
But Midbar 16, verse 15 states, Moshe was very angry and said to Jehovah, Don't accept their grain offering. I haven't taken one donkey from them. I've done nothing wrong to any of them. Wow. I couldn't say that to the Lord. Don't take their grain offering. Brittany did that thing. and Don't take her grain offering. And he's showing anger. I don't know if it was because, you know, he needed a nap or something. He was over 80 years old. But then again, he did live to be 120, so he's like middle-aged at that point. Um, I, I think this is amazing, but there's more to it. There's a lot. You know, when at first you're like, what? Why on earth did he just say that? I'm like, okay, don't take their grain offering. All right, Mo Moses, you're a mean guy. <laughs> but there's a lot more to it. There really is. Now, the grain offering is is called the minka. Ha. Huh. Maybe in the morning when you do something called minka prayers, it is an offering, a gift, a tribute, a present, an obligation, a sacrifice, an offering to God. So when Moshe said, don't take their grain offering, he said, don't take their minka. Don't take their offering, their presentation before you, Lord. Don't accept their gift. Don't accept their incense offering. Don't accept their prayer. Don't accept their grain offering. It's more than just Moses like saying, yeah, they don't take the grain offering. No, it's a lot more. It's a lot more. Now turn, turn over uh, back to Leviticus 6, Leviticus 6, verse 17 and 18. Leviticus 6. Verse 17 and 18, we're going to get a little bit more understanding about this grain offering and how profound it is. It isn't just moisture being a little bit old and, you know, not very strong. Uh, it's, it has a lot to do with this offering, this sin offering. Leviticus 6, verse 17 and 18, it is not to be baked with leaven. I have given it as their portion of my offering made by fire, like the sin offering and the guilt offering. It is especially holy. Every male descendant of Aaron may eat from it. It is his share of the offering, offerings for Jehovah made by fire forever through all your generations. Whoever touches these offer, those offerings will become holy. So here what Moshe is saying is don't accept this offering, this minka offering, Jehovah, so that they will not become holy. Well, has a lot more profoundness than don't accept their grain offering, okay? He's saying, don't accept this tribute to you, Lord. Don't accept this present to you, Lord. Don't accept this, this grain offering, this minka, and don't let it become holy. Don't let it become holy. Now let's take this a little bit further and turn back to Numbers 5. Numbers 5, verse 15. Numbers 5, verse 15. We're going to take this grain offering, understanding what Moshe is really saying once you have your Hebrew roots. Once you have your Hebrew roots. Numbers, Bamidbar 5, verse 15. This is part of the law of jealousy. He is to bring his wife to the Kohen, along with the offering for her two quarts of barley flour, on which he has not poured olive oil or put frankincense, because it is a grain offering for jealousy, a grain offering for remembering, for recalling guilt to mind. Amen? So here in Numbers 5, and what we're doing in the parash is number 16, now you would have understood, okay, this jealousy. Don't accept this, Lord, because they're jealous of what you put in me. So don't accept their grain offering. Don't let this minka offering, this gift to you, this present to you be accepted. Don't accept this to become holy for before you with their incense. Don't let, because no, they're jealous, Lord. Don't accept their grain offering. It's a lot more. The Moses was saying a lot. He was really a good chess player. Don't accept their grain offering, Lord. Oh. Moses, checkmate. All right. Let's go back to number 16. Now, this is an interesting one. This will get into a little of the gematria. 
Well, wait till you see this, Brittany, since you're such a math whiz now. All right, well, then get ready because I'm going to ask you some questions. Number 16, verses 16 through 18. We have one of our homeschoolers here, and she scored great. She made her parents proud, especially her mommy as a teacher. Homeschool your kid. Teach them the right ways. Moshe said to Korak, you and your group, be there before Jehovah tomorrow. You, they, and Aaron. Each of you is to take a fire pan and put incense in it. Every one of you bring before Jehovah his fire pan, 250 fire pans, you two, and Aaron, each one his fire pan. Each man took his fire pan and put fire in it, laid incense on it, and stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with Moshe and Aaron. Amen? Now, why do we care that there's 250 fire pans? You know, you're like, all right, okay, now we understand the grain offering. There's got to be more. Why do we have 250 instead of 296 or 382? Why don't we have 150? Okay. Now, remember how, how much incense Eliezer was required to transport in Bamidbar? It was 54,000 drams, which is an even multiple of the number of letters in God's name. What is a multiple? Divide 54,000 by 216, and you get 250. The very same number of people in the rebellion who had brought their fire pans to burn incense. 54,000 divided by 216 equals 250. The number as a multiple of the letters of the name in the context of God's name. yud heh vav -Hey. Okay? So you start getting into some of the gematria. 54,000 divided by 216 equals 250. Now you've got to go back to the Eliezer scripture and how much was required to transport in Bamidbar. How much incense. That's why everything starts to layer together. But if you don't remember the one layer, then you can't go to the other layer, okay? And then you don't get this numeric understanding which goes to God's name, which goes to the 250 fire pans, which God is going to choose between the 250 men and Aaron and, and Moses. And then these guys are going to do going against them. And then there was a three. And then what does the number three mean? And then you keep going further and further and further until you go spinning, spinning, go, Auntie M, it's a twister. No. But it can. It's real fun when you start to add, like, especially if like, you're into math and numbers, you can really get lost in the scriptures and see the layers and layers and layers. All right, let's do one more verse. Number 16. Verse 19. Then we'll wrap up and we'll take some questions for a few minutes. Korak assembled all the group who were against them at the end. Actually, let's, let's go back to what happens to Korak because we need this because it's very important if you know any Jehovah Witnesses. Okay? Number 16, verses 28 to 30. Let's do that real quick. Number 16, verses 28 to 30. Moshe said, here's how you will know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these things and that I haven't done them out of my own ambition. If these men die a natural death like other people, only sharing the fate of common to all humanity, then Jehovah has not sent me. But if Jehovah does something new, if the ground opens up and swallows them with everything they own, and they go down alive to Sheol. And then you will understand that these men have contempt for Jehovah. Amen? Now, the Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in hell. Okay? But the word hell is right there in the Hebrew. The, the Hebrew word for hell, down alive, to Sheol. It means hell, underworld, grave, the pit. Okay? So when... Jehovah heard Moshe's, Moshe's cry. He does something different. These are the words that you know, Moshe spoke. He was a prophet. Boom. All of a sudden, these 250 guys went right straight alive down to hell. Okay? So hell is actually there in the Hebrew. It is very specific to that particular area. 
And there are tons of places um, that you can go to to prove that, like a number in Psalm 6, verse 5, here's just a reference, Psalm 6, verse 5, for in death no one remembers you, and Sheol, who will praise you? Psalm 9, the wicked will return to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. And there's a bunch of other places that Sheol is around. And also in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke 16, verses 22 to 26, Yeshua says in verse 23, In Sheol, where he was in torment, the rich man looked up, saw Abraham far away from Eleazar at his side. So he was in hell. So hell is real, and you don't want to be there because you're in torment 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And because Jehovah is so angry at you, you get to see heaven from where you are, but you can't get there. And you're in pain and in your own cell 24 hours a day, seven days a week until he destroys your soul. So the lesson for tonight in this barrage is don't go against God's anointed. Just leave. Go find yourself another place to worship if you don't agree with what's going on. There at the prayer tower, there at Beth Yeshua, we're here at this congregation. It has been a wonderful time talking with you guys. Amen and amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us and he's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures 
searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom.